So today I'm going to be talking about hiring, team building and also my experience with my hiring process and the things that I've learnt and wish I'd known and paid more attention to in the beginning. So what I've definitely found to be the case is you cannot do everything by yourself and when you try you will regret it. So whatever limiting beliefs you have about hiring, I definitely had limiting beliefs in terms of not wanting to be responsible for someone else's livelihood. That thought made me really uncomfortable and I just had to get over that because that's part of running a business. From my experience so far, I think what I've learned and been able to make a distinction of is that hiring, building a team, upskilling is a whole skill on itself. Like there's some people who are really good at just managing resources, bringing together resources to execute their vision. And that is a whole skill set. Being able to train someone up, being able to clone yourself is a skill that we need to build as CEOs essentially. Or if you don't build it yourself, you need to hire someone that is really good at doing that in particular. One thing my coach is always saying is the three things we can, we can use to grow or to create things, whether this is in business or in real life, is money, time or people. With your business, you have money or you have time, or you should have money and time, and you also have people at your disposal to grow and to scale it. But the thing is, compared to money and time, human beings are, human beings, literally human resources, is a whole nother ball game because human beings are so complex. They're not formulaic the way numbers are. You can't just plug them into an Excel spreadsheet and see what comes out at the end. Someone can be one way on Monday or have one desire, one motivation on Monday. By Friday, they can be completely different. So it's just such a different ball game compared to the other resources we're used to working with, which is money and time. And it's normally our money and our own time, but now it's kind of out of our control. But we say it's out of our control, but you have to remember that hiring and upskilling is a skill, literally a skill. And some people are so good at hiring that they're able to bring in the right people. They're so good at upskilling that they're able to keep people motivated, keep people engaged in the role because they recognize that even if you're not the best candidate to start off from, if we can train you properly, if we can upskill you properly, then that can motivate you, that can now create you into a better employee. So yeah, I, I just think it's really important to make that distinction as a business owner that the onus is on us to hire and to build that skill of hiring, upskilling and keeping people engaged. Yeah, you might say, oh yeah, someone came in and they were this or they were that, they lacked this and they lacked that, but you have to flip it back on ourselves. Like, why did we hire them? Why didn't we see that? What is it about our recruitment process that didn't pull that out in the beginning? That's the way we need to look at it. We need to keep bringing the onus back on you. Actually bringing in people with the right traits and now giving them the right skills, whether those are hard skills or soft skills or things that are really unique and specific to your business, it's, the onus is all on us and that's the distinction we need to make and focus on building as opposed to where are the good people at? It's like, where is my process at? Where is my, where is my hiring skill set at? That's what we need to focus on. Another key part when it comes to this is making sure you have good SOP. So these are standard operating procedures and it should be a step-by-step -step system for any task that you're giving your employee. And what I really struggled with when it came to this is I'm not someone who likes structure, I'm not someone who likes systems, I don't like budgets, I don't like schedules, I don't like anything that's systemized, but I know how important it is to have systems. I've been running my business like I'm trying to sell it from the very beginning, because when you do that, you're very careful when it comes to things like systemizing. So what I've actually done, in the case of my first hire, who was a virtual assistant, I'm actually giving her the task of writing up the SOPs for all the processes I give her because I'm not gonna lie I wasn't the best at documenting it even though I know I should but I always knew in the back of my head that when I got someone on I was gonna give them that as a task. Again I've made that distinction that the onus was on me to systemize that before I gave it to her which I didn't so when I have given her task sometimes it's not been caught on as fast as I would have liked but I've had to be patient I've had to be understanding because I didn't systemize that as well as I could so there was room for misunderstanding room for miscommunication or things to just not make sense and that's my fault so that distinction again it keeps coming back to flipping it back on you and the skill you have built as a trainer, as an upskiller, as a manager, as a leader, and do what I should have done to make her transition into the role as easy as it could have been. But I've recognized that, I've been patient, and yeah, I've given her the task of writing up those SOPs so that for future hires, that wouldn't be the case. Another key thing you might wanna look at is making sure that you hire into your weaknesses. You don't wanna be hiring someone with the exact same skill set as you. You want someone with the same sort of morals or the same sort of communication style so that you can click, but you don't want someone with the exact same strengths and the exact same weaknesses you have. So when we say clone ourselves, it's cloning ourselves in terms of being able to do the task, but you 
you do want to make sure that your hire, especially your first hire, is able to fill in some of your weaknesses because that will release so much burden from you. One piece of advice that I got from an old coach that was so beneficial when it came to how you should look at what tasks to outsource is to basically, or well she illustrated it with four quadrants, but I'm just gonna describe it as four lists. And you wanna have one list which says all the things that you're good at and you enjoy. You wanna have another list that says all the things that you're good at, but you don't enjoy. Another list that says all the things that you enjoy, but you're not good at. And the final list to say all the things that you're not good at and you don't enjoy. And in that order is the order you should work at prioritizing what you outsource. So the tasks and the things that you're not good at and you don't enjoy should be your absolute main priority of now outsourcing those things and outsourcing, outsourcing those tasks. Your second most important priority will be the things that you're not good at but you do enjoy because at the end of the day we need to be performing the business functions to the best of its ability even if that comes with a compromise of doing things that you do enjoy or not so which is why the second to least important thing to outsource are the things that you're good at but you don't enjoy the things that you do enjoy and you are good at that's your north star because eventually you want that to be the only thing you do because that is your literal zone of genius that is your equilibrium of peace and that is what we want Focusing in that zone of genius, you're gonna thrive a lot more, you're gonna feel a lot better, you're gonna feel a lot less burnt out and a lot more motivated to work in your business. Another distinction you wanna make when it comes to your first hire is having that hire it might feel like a bit of a burden when they first come on because especially if this is your first hire, if you haven't documented things, you haven't created those standard operating procedures, those step-by-step -step guides on how to do things, then there's gonna be a lot of training involved. So in the short term, it is gonna be more of a task, but in the long term, that's gonna be really beneficial because as long as you keep them engaged and they stay with you, they're now gonna be able to train on future hires. You're building your skill on how to train and it probably won't be as cumbersome or as tiring the next time someone is hired. It's definitely like a short-term sacrifice you're gonna to have to make, but in the long run, for you as a business owner, but also your actual business, is going to be so, so, so worth it. And like I said, you can now outsource the onboarding process. And like I was saying, even if you haven't documented things well in the past, that doesn't mean you can't give your employee the time Task of creating a SOP around the whole onboarding process because they would have gone through it themselves. They can pick up on the training required, what they felt was missing, what they felt was needed. So that for future hires, it's a lot smoother of a process. In terms of what role your first hire should be, like I said, you can use those quadrants as a guideline, but I think the advice I was given that I've really found to be true is to first of all, create like a mini you who can do, who's a bit of a generalist, can do many different tasks. So this could be an executive assistant, it could be a virtual assistant, it could be a personal assistant, but just a mini you that you're able to outsource various different tasks to because that initial hire is a lot of it is just about releasing that this offloads and all that pressure and strain of doing every task that can be at varying levels of importance, which is the frustrating thing about it because you will find yourself, I've got such important things to do, but this admin, this little piece of admin needs to be done, otherwise I'm not complying with the tax laws. It's just like, oh, and that generalist where you just kind of hire someone based on having certain traits, like being organized, having a go-getter attitude, being proactive and things like that, means that you will offload that stress. And it can also help you to pick out what specific areas need to be now outsourced into for a specific role. If you didn't want to make your first hire a generalist, then at least make sure that your first hire is someone more on the income generating side. So if you're someone who runs ads, maybe you wanna outsource the ad side of things. You might wanna use an agency, or you might want to use someone who's good at sales or doing outbound marketing outreach, because that is income generating. And at the end of the day, cash is king. So getting that income in or getting someone to help with bringing that income in is just gonna help you have more capital to invest in building a bigger team moving forward. And also remember, you don't have to jump into having people on actual payroll. So as I was saying, my limiting belief was all about having that, that legal requirement to pay for someone's livelihood. And it just gave me, oh, so much anxiety. And it doesn't have to be like that. There are so many ways to dip your toe into hiring. So you can use temps, you can use interns, you could use contractors, you could use agencies. You might even want to look into government schemes. So I know here in the UK last year, they had something called the Kickstart Scheme, where the government was basically paying for people to come work for you, but if they were on unemployment benefits, because they were trying to really deal with the youth unemployment rates, which were really, really high during the pandemic. There are so many avenues of hiring without going full force into like full payroll. And definitely explore your options, definitely look at what's out there. You might have other government schemes, especially post pandemic. I know a lot of governments are doing things to try to stimulate the economy again. You never know what's out there, just look, don't rule things out and 
see what your options are and see where it takes you. Thank you for watching if you've gotten to the end. I really hope you found this useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and leave any comments letting me know if you have any video suggestions and I'll definitely make sure to get to those. See you again next time. Bye.